Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and today I would like to show you Portrait Background Removal AI in Luminar Neo. So, as always, we're going to begin with a picture. We're going to go to Edit and then we're going to go to Portrait Background Removal. And my first surprise is, is that I couldn't find it. But after a few minutes of clicking on all kinds of things, I discovered it was in the layer properties and under masking and portrait background. Now this surprised me because portrait background AI was one of Luminar Neo's most hyped features. So to find it sort of shyly hiding away is a little bit of a surprise. And again, unlike features such as Sky AI where they're packed with separate adjust adjustments and embellishments, portrait background is pretty barren really. We have an option to remove and it will do just that. So there you go, there's our background removed. So far, so good. And if at this stage, what you wanted to do is take this image and use it for um, potentially a thumbnail for social media, some kind of graphic for say a PowerPoint presentation, so on, you really are good to go. What we can do is we can export this image as a PNG, which will maintain this transparency and use whatever we want and put the image wherever we want. However, a few problems become apparent. As good as this looks now, if we drop in a background, we're gonna see that the background removal wasn't quite right. And perhaps from where you're sitting, this looks pretty good. But if you were able to look closely, you would see that I've still got quite a defined outline around my subject. And unfortunately, unlike tools like uh, Portrait Bucket AI or Sky Replacement, I don't have these sort of adjustments where I can just kind of feather it back and blur the edges. Instead, I've got to go back to the old school of brushing. So with the brushing, it's it's pretty basic stuff. Uh, so we have an option for a transition brush, one that sort of presents the object, and one for the background. Now, in this case, I imagine the transition brush to be the most appropriate, and we can sort of change this sort of slider here and make our brush bigger and smaller. But the real problem that we have at the moment is twofold. First of all, the fact that Luminar Neo has rid us of all of this background is indeed nice. But if you've ever done any kind of brushing whatsoever, you'll know that getting around background like this is, is easy. You just set your biggest brush and a bit of chaotic erasing is all you need to get rid of it. And that the challenge comes when you're trying to sort of delete the parts where your background and your subject meet. And in that regards, it's no different in Luminar Neo. That's the same problem that we have here, except that the refinement brush in this case isn't particularly bright. Now, if you've used uh, Capture One, Lightroom, uh, you know, ACDC Ultimate, you'll be aware that many of the brushes that you use uh, have something called edge awareness, which contains the brushing to lines and colors within the image. And it means that you can be faster and just a little bit more sloppy with your technique, but still get pretty decent results. And we have no equivalent here. So in terms of your brushing, despite this lovely head start, which doesn't save us that much time, we really are sort of hitting a gap now. And if we do a brush that we don't like, so let's say that we um, accidentally, let's trim off some of our object right so let's say we don't like that and we want to get rid of it I can't undo any of these brush strokes so I could be doing a wonderful job of uh, masking my subject with my brush and one false stroke I can't step back and undo that single stroke the only option I have is to basically go back remove the background and start again with my brushing. Now, this is a simple picture. One of the things about this picture, why I wanted to show you this first is that it's rather straightforward. We have a subject 
The subjects are not interacting with their background. They're clearly in front of it and quite well defined. So if we go into, say, a situation where our subject is interacting with the background. So in this case, we have the subject resting against a rail. And we'll try the same thing. So back to portrait removal, uh, background removal. It has this thing, which is entirely reasonable given what it's going to do for us. Don't worry, I'm still here. Please note, by the way, that this is a pre-release version and the final release might be faster. So here we go. So what we've done is we've applied portrait background removal, AI, to a bit more complicated composition. And as you can see right away, it's done a very good job of removing the sort of plain sky that was behind the subject previously. But even so, you can see in certain areas, the mask hasn't quite crept up to the edges. And of course, it's self-evident that it's not been able to handle the rail quite so well. So once again, we return to that old method of brushing away. So we can slide in a background of our choice. If that's what we want to do, we don't necessarily want a new background. You know, sometimes we just want an image with a transparent background. But if you do put in a background, you start to see the sort of imperfections in the system. So you can see here, they've got a bit of a glow where the mask hasn't quite worked. The railing is clearly there. You can see down the arms, we have sort of fringing. And what would be absolutely wonderful, aside from better brushing tools with edge awareness, is an ability much like we have on a portrait bokeh AI, where we're able to do edge correction, which basically claws the effect a few pixels to the left and right depending on which way you pull the slider and that would be enough to correct the most difficult aspect of this image you know getting rid of the railings wouldn't be difficult particularly with an edge aware brush um, but at the moment it is quite a, quite difficult so anyway that is the very first iteration of a uh, portrait background removal and overall it's a pretty nice and a good start if you are using it for simple tasks that don't require a great deal of accuracy or perfection then this is going to be great you've got a one-click option to pull yourself out of your image and throw yourself somewhere else but if you are using this for you know publishing um, if you're using it for your photography whereby it really matters if you've got broken railings or an outline around the person, you're going to find it very slow, tedious and difficult to correct it in Luminar Neo. And despite that head start where it gets rid of the bulk of the background, for the most part, I would still prefer to perform the task in an alternative photo editor that has an edge aware brush where I can use a gigantic brush to get rid of the bulk of the background and then use my edge aware brush to creep around the sort of edging of my subject and delete the background there. Anyway, this is a portrait book AI. I want to point out this is entirely free to anybody who's already got Luminar Neo. And it's just another feature in a highly recommended Luminar Neo product. I do think this particular feature has some way to go, but it's a nice to have and I'm glad I've got it. And if you'd like to try it yourself, you can for free. No credit card required, and there's a description in the details for that below. If you've liked this video, please subscribe. If you don't like this video, put in a link, uh, a description in the bottom of a comment, and just let me know why, and I'll try and do something different next time. But I hope that was useful. And uh, my name's Richard from Silent Peak, and I wish you the best of days. Bye-bye.